All right, everybody, my name is Tori Beatty, and today I'll be giving you a brief introduction to the interface Kumu. Kumu is a powerful data visualization platform that helps organize complex information into interactive relationship maps. It's similar to Google Data Studio, Microsoft Power BI, and Visme. Along the top here, you'll see some different links to information pages, including pricing, a gallery for examples, and the site's manifesto. We're not going to be looking in depth at many of these, but one stop I do want to make is the pricing guide to highlight some of the benefits and constraints of the different plans. There are three different options, personal, organizational, and enterprise. The account I'm using is a personal account, which allows for unlimited public projects and access to Kumu's core features. Upgrading to an organizational account allows you to group related projects and users under a central account that is managed by the organization's admins. Organizations can also add users with read-only access to projects, while personal accounts can only add contributors. The enterprise version is more suitable for large government organizations with special hosting and security needs. Once you decide on a plan, signing up is easy. All you'll need is an email, then you choose a username and password, and are good to go. I've already registered, so I'll click here to take us to our dashboard. Before we get started on a new project, let's take a look at this page. Scrolling down, there is a zero to Kumu, which introduces the user to the interface. These steps are a great place for beginners, as the interface itself is not very intuitive and rather relies heavily on tutorials to get you started. To begin, we'll select New Project. Here you add a project name and description, as well as select if it is a public or private project. The next page shows some different template options for the map you plan on building. Again, if you're not sure, Kumu offers a convenient video introducing you to the different system maps, and each individual option will give you another more in-depth video on the purposes and how to build that specific map. System maps help you understand and engage complex issues by visualizing the underlying webs of cause and effect. Stakeholder maps allow you to explore who's involved and how they're connected in a visually engaging way and SNA map help you identify key influencers, power structures, funding flows, and more. It doesn't have the access to all the decorations and the other templates, but it supports much larger maps. To show the basics of how to create a map, I'm going to select stakeholder because the custom template isn't actually working at this time. Next, we'll add a name for the map, and from here, you'll see a blank screen and a green button, which is what enables you to add different elements and connections. For our introduction, I'll begin a simple family tree. I'll start by adding an element and labeling it with my name. Once the element populates, over here on the side, you'll see we can add more information. For element type, I'll select person, but you can also make the value be whatever you want. This is an important capability for complex maps that are tracking different concepts and themes. For description, I'll put my age, but anything can really go here, and so far I haven't found there to be any text length limitations, which is beneficial for those really in-depth projects that have a lot of information to share. And in the right-hand corner here, you can see you can even add a picture either from the web or your desktop. I'll be using one from a folder already saved on my computer. Next, you'll want to add an element to connect to. You can do this by either adding another independent element and then adding a connection afterwards, or by adding a connection like so, and including a new element to connect to. Now, although it will not show up on the map itself, it's possible to add details on the relationship of the connection themselves. Select the line between our elements, and then here we'll type in mother, but again, there doesn't seem to be a real limitation for what you can add. Here I'm showing how to create a map by hand, but if you select the green plus button again, it shows the option to import data. This can be from a locally hosted spreadsheet or Google Sheet. Kumo encourages collaboration by recommending making your Google Sheets publicly editable to crowdsource information, which would be good in large public interest projects, but of course leaves your project open to possible sabotage, whether that be intentional or not. Since I'm not going to create a complete map today, let's delete this project. Select the taskbar on the side, open admin, and select delete project. This again wasn't very intuitive. There wasn't anything on the map creation screen for deletion, and the trash buttons shown previously is actually for elements you've already deleted off your map. I had to look up how to do this on the docs page. Confirm delete, then let's go back to the dashboard page to finish up with an example of a good in-depth project to show the complete capabilities of the interface. 
We're going to select the tree icon here to bring us back to the home page and then go to gallery. Scrolling down, you'll see a lot of available examples, but we're going to use this one here on TNC Global Situational Analysis. This is a very large map showing a complex analysis of the original creator's projects and programs. In the middle here, it shows the ultimate goal of the project proposal and clicking on different element bring up details as shown here the same for the relationships lines. They expand with more text on the side. Hovering over a single element for a moment will highlight the relating elements and along the top there are some subtopics that will do the same thing. Although this is a lot of information to take in, it provides a developing picture of the broader context in which the project operates. A map like this likely has been made by an experienced user who has dedicated a lot of time to this site and would be very difficult for a new user to create, but it shows what this interface can be capable of. I encourage anyone interested to check out some of the other examples available on the site to see if this interface can be used to you in the future as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.